Almighty God, unto whom all hearts be open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of thy Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love thee and worthily magnify thy holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Hear what our Lord Jesus Christ saith. Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, with all thy soul, with all thy mind. This is the first and great commandment. And the second is like unto it, thou shalt love the neighbor as thyself. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. be with you. Let us pray. O God, who has hallowed this day by the martyrdom of thine apostles, Peter and Paul, grant unto thy church in all things to follow the precepts of those through whom she received the beginning of religion. Through Jesus Christ, thy Son, our Lord, who liveth and reigneth with thee in the unity of the Holy Spirit, ever one God, world without end.
A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. In those days, Herod the king laid violent hands upon some who belonged to the church. He killed James, the brother of John, with a sword. And when he saw that it pleased the Jews, he proceeded to arrest Peter also. This was during the days of unleavened bread. And when he had seized him, he put him in prison and delivered him to four squads of soldiers to guard him, intending after the Passover to bring him out to the people. So Peter was kept in prison, but earnest prayer for him was made to God by the church. The very night when Herod was about to bring him out, Peter was sleeping between two soldiers, bound with two chains, and sentries before the door were guarding the prison. And behold, an angel of the Lord appeared, and a light shone in the cell. And he struck Peter on the side and woke him, saying, Get up quickly. And the chains fell off his hands. And the angel said to him, Dress yourself and put on your sandals. And he did so. And he said to him, Wrap your cloak around you and follow me. And he went out and followed him. He did not know that what was done by the angel was real, but thought he was seeing a vision. When they had passed the first and the second guard, they came to the iron gate leading into the city. It opened to them of its own accord, and then they went out and passed on through one street, and immediately the angel left him. And Peter said to himself, Now I am sure that the Lord has sent his angel and rescued me from the hand of Herod, from all that the Jewish people were expecting. The word of the Lord. From the second letter of St. Paul to Timothy. 
Beloved, I am already on the point of being sacrificed. The time of my departure has come. I have fought the good fight. I have finished the race. I have kept the faith. From now on there is laid up for me the crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, will award to me on that day. And not only to me, but also to all who have loved his appearing. But the Lord stood by me and gave me strength to proclaim the word fully, that all the Gentiles might hear it. So I was rescued from the lion's mouth. The Lord will rescue me from every evil and save me for his heavenly kingdom. To him be the glory forever and ever. Amen. The word of the Gospel according to St. Matthew. At that time, when Jesus came into the district of Caesarea Philippi, he asked his disciples, who do men say the Son of Man is? They said, some say John the Baptist, others say Elijah, and others Jeremiah, or one of the prophets. He said to them, but who do you say that the Son of, who do you say that I am? Simon Peter replied, you are the Christ, the Son of the living God. And Jesus answered him, Blessed are you, Simon Barjona, for flesh and blood has not revealed this to you, but my Father who is in heaven. And I tell you, you are Peter, and on this rock I will build my church and the gates of Hades shall not prevail against them. I will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven, 
And whatever you bind on earth shall be bound in heaven. And whatever you loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. The word of the Lord. to be worthy. After inquiry among the Christian people, and upon the recommendation of those concerned with their formation, I testify that they have been found worthy. Then relying on the help of the Lord God and our Savior, Jesus Christ, we choose these men, our brothers, for the order of priesthood. Thanks be to God. My dear Ordinandi, dear friends in Christ, the annual festival of St. Peter and Paul is a wonderful context for the ordination of priests. So much from the life and wisdom of these princes of the apostles sheds light on the ministry of priests, even on our own day. This is an ancient celebration in the church. Indeed, this solemnity was inserted on the Roman calendar even before the celebration of Christmas became a universal celebration. Already by the sixth century, the church in Rome celebrated this feast with a pilgrimage of three masses, one at St. Peter's Basilica on the Vatican Hill, the site of Peter's crucifixion, one in the Basilica of St. Paul outside the walls, the site of St. Paul's beheading, and the third in the catacombs of St. Sebastian, where the bodies of the two apostles were hidden during the time of the many hostile invasions of the Italian peninsula. Their martyrdom was the supreme witness to Christ. This pilgrimage bore witness to the eloquence of the gospel preached in the shedding of their blood, blood that has forever consecrated the See of Rome as the head and mother of all the churches throughout the world. Our diocese is one of those particular churches, and we are named for St. Peter. We have a unique and intimate connection with his successor. The chair of St. Peter evokes the authority of right teaching and orthodox practice that builds us together in Catholic unity. St. Peter's faith, St. Paul's zeal for mission, form the spiritual construct of what it means to be an ordinary Catholic. And so it is fitting that when it comes to our ordaining our priests and sending them into this mission, we do so on the day, on the feast day of these apostles. Josh, Chris, and Tim, Saints Peter and Paul are given to you today in a particular way so that they may be your patrons so that you may imitate their virtues and immerse yourself in their apostolic courage and come to inherit the glory that is their heavenly reward. And their martyrdom, this is part of their patronage too, because it shows to the highest degree of what conformity to Christ looks like. 
Through sacramental ordination, the priest not only represents Christ to the church, he makes Christ present in his person as well as in the sacramental action he undertakes. Thus, the Catechism of the Catholic Church teaches that it is in the ecclesial service of the priest that, it is, that Christ himself who is present in his church as head and body, as shepherd of the flock, as high priest of the redemptive sacrifice, as the teacher of truth. This is what the church means by saying that the priest, by virtue of the sacrament of holy orders, acts in persona Christi capitis. Christ is the source of all priesthood. The priests of the old law were but a figure of Christ, and the priest of the new law acts in the person of Christ. But of course, dear brothers, conformity to Christ implies conformity to his passion and to his cross, to his sacrificial gift of love to his Father on behalf of the men and women made in God's own image and likeness. On the horizon of faith, the Lord's cross stands as the clearest and most eloquent example and expression of God's love and his power to save. Our own priestly ministry is rightly evaluated to the extent that it expresses the same love, the same sacrificial character, the same willingness to lay down our lives for our friends. There is a moment in the ordination rite when this is made poignantly clear. After the new priests are vested, they kneel before the bishop and receive the chalice and the paten with bread and wine for the celebration of men. The bishop places these two vessels into their hands, noting that they are the gifts of the people of God to be offered to God. And he tells each priest to understand what he will do to imitate the mystery he handles and to conform his life to the mystery of Christ's cross. The vessels are a sign of offering, the offering of the Eucharist and the offering of their own lives. Both are understood as conformity to Christ's cross because there is no resurrection without death. There is no communion without sacrifice. There is an old theological axiom drawn from this ritual handling of the chalice and patent. The priest is the man who handles the mysteries, and he is changed by the mystery he handles into what he handles. The priest is the man who handles the mysteries, and he's changed by what he handles into what he handles. As priest, it's not enough for you to handle the mysteries as if you were facilitating it or orchestrating it and somehow presenting it to the people. No, you are not removed from the offering. You are not a proxy that stands in for the one who offers, because conformity to Christ is the work of the Holy Spirit, and that work unfolds in the deepest parts of your soul. Because of the Spirit's action in this ordination and in every celebration of the Mass, every confession you will hear, every baptism, every wedding, every anointing of the sick, you are being changed by the mystery you handle, by the sacrament you celebrate. Just as the faithful are changed by the mystery of the Eucharist they receive in Holy Communion, what you offer, what you handle physically at the altar, expresses the offering of yourself on the altar of your heart. The efficacy of priestly ministry, the power of priestly authority, and the eloquence of priestly charity is derived from your willingness to lay down your life in full conformity to Christ, our High Priest. After all, this is the example of your patrons. This is the witness of the Apostles. Day after day, 
ye will take into your hands the mystery of Holy Thursday and Good Friday. It is a mystery of dying and rising, and in that you will trace the dying and rising of Christ in the dying and rising of the faithful entrusted to your care. And this, dear brothers, is a mystery that the Church has always contemplated through the gift of tears. Do not be afraid of tears, particularly when they come in prayer, particularly when they come when you're touching the brokenness of the human condition. Do not be afraid of tears shed over the physical suffering of your people that you will anoint in the hospital. Tears over the spiritual suffering of so many who do not have a living relationship with the Lord or find themselves feeling alienated, abandoned, and alone. Tears, of course, for your own sins and your own weakness and for the countless expressions of human brokenness in search of grace that you will experience and encounter in the confessional. Tears over injustice and for the avarice and violence in this world that is so counter to the will of God and to human flourishing. These are priestly tears. And ultimately, priestly tears are a contemplation of the cross an expression of the Church's extreme sorrow, sorrow deep, at our rejection of divine love. Indeed, in the Father's marvelous plan for our salvation, love itself became incarnate, and we nailed it to a tree. Priestly ministry is a spiritual pondering over the deep work of grace that always raises up what was cast down. In the spiritual life, tears are a symbol of hope that God can accomplish more than we can even imagine. They are a prayer for mercy, for forgiveness, in gratitude, and for salvation. The gift of tears are also the lens through which we can see the power of God at work so that they can lead us from sorrow to joy. Pope Francis spoke beautifully of this, commenting on the tears of Mary Magdalene shed outside of the tomb on Easter Sunday morning. In his very colloquial way, he said her tears became her eyeglasses, through which she was, the ab the, she was able, the first, mind you, to be able to see the resurrection. Because for her, tears of sorrow and tears of love were one and the same. May conversion and conformity to Christ be at the forefront of your priestly ministry and your priestly consciousness. And when that mystery brings you to tears, remember St. Peter, St. Paul, St. Mary Magdalene, and all the saints. Call upon the assistance of the Blessed Virgin Mary, whose own pure heart was pierced by a sword of sorrow. Conform your lives to the mystery of Christ's cross without fear. Handle the mysteries in the full knowledge that you will not only be changed by them, you will be changed into what you handle. See the work of grace. Greet the resurrection after the sorrow and share that hope and joy to all and with all of God's people entrusted to your care. My dear sons, before you proceed to the order of the priesthood, you must declare before the people your resolve to undertake this office. Do you resolve to discharge unfailingly, with the guidance of the Holy Spirit, the office of the priesthood in the presbyteral rank, as trustworthy co-workers with the order of bishops in feeding the Lord's flock? I do. 
Do you resolve to carry out the ministry of the word worthily and wisely in the preaching of the gospel and the teaching of the Catholic faith? I do. Do you resolve to celebrate the mysteries of Christ reverently and faithfully according to the tradition of the church, especially in the sacrifice of the Eucharist and the sacrament of reconciliation for the praise of God and the sanctification of the Christian people? I do. Do you resolve to implore with us the mercy of God for the people entrusted to you, with zeal for the commandment to pray without ceasing? I do. Do you resolve to be united more closely each day to Christ the High Priest, who offered himself for us to the Father as a pure sacrifice, and with him to consecrate yourselves to God for the salvation of all? I do, with the help of God. Do you promise respect and obedience to me and my successors? I do. May God, who has begun this good work in you, bring it to fulfillment. Do you promise respect and obedience to me and my successors? I do. May God, who has begun this good work in you, bring it to fulfillment. Do you promise respect and obedience to me and my successors? I do. May God, who has begun this good work in you, bring it to fulfillment. Dearly beloved, to God the Almighty Father, that he pour forth heavenly gifts in abundance on these his servants, whom he has chosen for the office of the priest. Let us kneel.
of the Holy Spirit and the power of priestly grace, that you may surround with your rich and unfailing gifts those whom we present to your fatherly care for consecration, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us stand.
draw near, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, author of human dignity and bestower of all graces, through whom all things progress, through whom everything is made firm, who by the power of the Holy Spirit, in order to form a priestly people, establish among them ministers of Christ your Son in various orders. Already in the earlier covenant, there arose offices instituted by mystical rites, so that when you had set Moses and Aaron over your people to govern and sanctify them, you chose men next in the order and dignity to join them and assist them in their work. Thus in the desert you instilled the spirit of Moses in the minds of 70 wise men. With them as helpers, he more easily governed your people. So too, over the sons of Aaron, you poured an abundant share of their father's fullness, that the number of priests prescribed by the law might be sufficient for the sacrifices of the tabernacle, which were a shadow of the good things to come. But in these last days, Holy Father, you sent your Son into the world, Jesus, the Apostle and High Priest of our Confession. Through the Holy Spirit, he offered himself unblemished to you and made his apostles, who were consecrated in the truth, sharers in his mission. To them, you added companions, to proclaim and carry out the work of salvation through all the world. Now we pray, O Lord, provide also for our weakness these helpers whom we need for the exercise of the apostolic priesthood. Grant, we pray, Almighty Father, to these your servants the dignity of the priesthood. Renew deep within them the spirit of holiness. May they hold the office second in order received from you, O God, and by the example of their manner of life, may they inspire right conduct. May they be trustworthy co-workers with our order, so that by their preaching and through the grace of the Holy Spirit, the words of the gospel may, or may bear fruit in human hearts and reach even to the ends of the earth. Together with us, may they be faithful stewards of your mystery, so that your people may be renewed through the cleansing waters of rebirth and refreshed from your altar, so that sinners may be reconciled and the sick raised up. May they be joined to us, Lord, in imploring your mercy for the people entrusted to them and for the whole world. Thus may the full number of the nations gathered together in Christ become your one people brought to perfection in your kingdom. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever.
May the Lord Jesus, whom the Father anointed with Holy Spirit and power. Guard you and preserve you that you may sanctify the Christian people and offer sacrifice to God. May the Lord Jesus Christ, whom the Father anointed with the Holy Spirit and with power, guard and preserve you that you may sanctify the Christian people and offer sacrifice to God. May the Lord Jesus Christ, whom the Father anointed with the Holy Spirit and with power, guard and preserve you that you may sanctify the Christian people and offer sacrifice to God. Receive the oblation of the holy people to be offered to God. Understand what you will do. Imitate what you will celebrate and conform your life to the mystery of the Lord's cross. Receive the oblation of the holy people to be offered to God. Understand what you will do. Imitate what you will celebrate and conform your life to the mystery of the Lord's cross.
receive the oblation of the holy people to be offered to God. Understand what you will do, imitate what you will celebrate, and conform your life to the mystery of the Lord's cross.
Pray, brethren, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable unto God, the Almighty Father. Consecrate, O Lord, the oblations which we offer unto thee, and with them accept on our behalf the prayers of thy blessed apostles, and thereby cleanse us from all sin, and defend us from all adversities, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be he with you. unto thee, O Lord, Holy Father, Almighty, everlasting God, through the great shepherd of thy flock, Jesus Christ, our Lord, who after his resurrection sent forth his apostles to preach the gospel and to teach all nations and promise to be with them always even to the end of the ages. Therefore, with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify thy glorious name, evermore praising thee and saying, Therefore, most merciful Father, we humbly pray thee through Jesus Christ, thy Son, our Lord. And we ask that thou accept and bless these gifts, these offerings, these holy and unblemished sacrifices. We offer them unto thee first for thy holy Catholic Church, that thou vouchsafe to keep her in peace, to guard, unite, and govern her throughout the whole world, together with thy servant Francis, our Pope, with me, thine unworthy servant, and all the faithful guardians of the Catholic and apostolic faith. Remember, O Lord, thy servants and handmaids. And all here around us stand, whose faith is known unto thee, and their steadfastness manifest, on whose behalf we offer unto thee, or who themselves offer unto thee this sacrifice of praise, for themselves and for all who are theirs, for the redemption of their souls, for the hope of their health and well-being, and who offer their prayers unto thee, the eternal God, the living and the true. United in one communion, we venerate the memory first of the glorious ever-Virgin Mary, Mother of our God and Lord Jesus Christ, 
of blessed Joseph, her spouse, as also of thy blessed apostles and martyrs, Peter and Paul, Andrew, James, John, Thomas, James, Philip, Bartholomew, Matthew, Simon, and Thaddeus, Linus, Cletus, Clement, Sixtus, Cornelius, Cyprian, Lawrence, Chrysogonus, John, and Paul, Cosmas, and Damien, and of all thy saints. Grant that by their merits and prayers we may be in all things defended with the help of thy protection. This then is the oblation of our service and that of thine whole family, which we offer also for thy servants, whom thou hast kindly advanced to the order of the priesthood. We beg thee graciously to accept it, Lord, and in thy mercy to preserve in them the gifts thou hast given, that what they have received from thy divine goodness they may fulfill with the aid of thy divine grace. But safe, O God, we beseech thee in all things to make this oblation blessed, approved, and accepted, a perfect and worthy offering, that it may become for us the body and blood of thy dearly beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, who the day before he suffered took bread into his holy and venerable hands, and with eyes lifted unto thee, to God his almighty Father, giving thanks to thee, he blessed, broke, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. Likewise, after supper, taking also this goodly chalice into his holy and venerable hands, again giving thanks to thee, he blessed and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. servants and thy holy people also, remembering the blessed passion of the same Christ, thy Son, our Lord, as also his resurrection from the dead and his glorious ascension into heaven, do offer unto thine excellent majesty of thine own gifts and bounty, the pure victim, the holy victim, the immaculate victim, the holy bread of eternal life and the chalice of everlasting salvation, about safe to look upon them with a merciful and pleasant countenance and to accept them, even as thou didst vouchsafe to accept the gifts of thy servant Abel the righteous, and the sacrifice of our patriarch Abraham, and the holy sacrifice, the immaculate victim, which thy high priest Melchizedek offered unto thee. We humbly beseech thee, almighty God, command these offerings to be brought by the hands of thy holy angel to thine altar on high, in the sight of thy divine majesty that all we who at this partaking of the altar shall receive the most sacred body and blood of thy Son may be fulfilled with all heavenly benediction and grace. Remember also, O Lord, thy servants and handmaids who have gone before us sealed with the seal of faith and who sleep the sleep of peace. <laughs> to them, O Lord, and to all that rest in Christ, we beseech thee to grant the mode of refreshing of light and of peace. Bless sinners also in thy servants. To hope in the multitude of thy mercies, not safe to grant some part in motion for thy holy apostle, the martyrs of John, Stephen, Matthias, Barnabas, Ignatius, Alexander, Marshall, Linus, and Peter, Elizabeth, Perpetual, Agatha, Lucy, Agnes, and Cecilia, Anastasia, and with all thy saints. For them whose fellowship and disease give with us, not waiting our fear, but granting us forgiveness. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, through whom, O Lord, thou dost ever create all these good things, thus sanctify, quicken, bless, 
and bestow them upon us. By whom and with whom and in whom, to thee, O Father Almighty, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, be all honor and glory throughout all ages, world without end. intercession of the blessed and glorious ever virgin mary mother of god with thy blessed apostles peter and paul and with andrew and all the saints favorably grant peace in our days that by the help of thine availing mercy we may ever be both free from sin and safe from all distress Christ, who said to thine apostles, Peace I leave with you, my peace I give unto you. Regard not our sins, but the faith of thy church, and grant to her peace and unity according to thy will, who livest and reignest with the Father and the Holy Spirit, ever one God, world without end. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Amen. We do not presume to come to this thy table, O merciful Lord, trusting in our own righteousness, but in thy manifold and great mercies. We are not worthy so much as to gather up the crumbs under thy table, but thou art the same Lord whose property is always to have mercy. Grant us therefore, gracious Lord, so to eat the flesh of thy dear Son, Jesus Christ, and to drink his blood, that our sinful bodies may be made clean by his body, and our souls washed through his most precious blood, and that we may evermore dwell in him, and he in us. Amen.
Behold the Lamb of God, behold him that taketh away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that thou shouldst come under my roof, but speak the word only, and my soul shall be healed. Lord, I am not worthy that thou shouldst come under my roof, but speak the word only, and my soul shall be healed. Lord, I am not worthy that thou shouldst come under my roof, but speak the word only, and my soul shall be healed. 